Dating to 5500 to 4500 BC, the Halaf culture succeeded, but overlapped the Samaran. Halaf pottery was among the most sophisticated produced in prehistory. They achieved even firing temperatures of 900 degrees Fahrenheit, giving a porcelain-like finish to the ceramics found from the Mediterranean coast to Iran. The Halafian villages at Tel Esawan in Iraq initiated rudimentary irrigation, raised crops, and domestic livestock. Located four miles from the ancient Sumerian city of Ur, where Abraham once lived, is a small mound of al Ubaid. Settlements in southern Mesopotamia, dating from possibly as early as 4800 to 3500 BC, are assigned collectively to the Ubaid culture. Although similar pottery remains in Turkey extend the Ubaid people to as far back as 6200 BC. The origin of the Ubaidans is unknown, although pottery shards show a connection with northern settlements in Iran and Turkey. Halafians were flourishing in the north, and about the same time, Ubaidan farmers began to settle the southern delta of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. The climatic conditions seemed unlikely for the Garden of Eden until the advancement of irrigation could bring water to the area. Irrigation technology began to be employed during the Ubaid period. By 3500 BC, the Ubaidans were living in townships from Mesopotamia to Syria to Turkey. Iraqi archaeologists excavated Tel Ababa in the 1970s and uncovered a water distribution system in which ceramic pipes channeled river water and water trapped in large wadis into the village. By the way, a wadi is a dry stream bed that fills with water only in the rainy season. About 4500 BC, the region was settled by people who are called Ubaidans. They settled most of the sites where the great cities of Sumer eventually were to grow, including Ur as Ubaidan pottery was found beneath Sumerian ware. The Ubaidans spread up the valley succeeding the Halafians and were the first people to dominate the whole Mesopotamia. The purpose for designating these ancient populations as Samaran, Halafian, or Ubaidan is primarily to place them in time and place context and need not necessarily imply ethnic differences. Pottery styles are the primary clues. Later, when written language is developed and pictures are drawn, we can infer racial and ethnic differences between the Akkadians and the Sumerians who occupied this region after the Ubaidans. Broken pieces of pottery show subtle transition from Ubaid ware to Uruk ware as the Semitic Akkadians and Sumerians began to occupy what had been Ubaid settlements. This slow change is more indicative of friendly contact with neighboring cultures than it is of a foreign invasion and replacement by conquest, quite common later during the third millennium. The first city settled in southern Mesopotamia, according to the Sumerian king list, was Eridu. This statement from the opening of the Sumerian king list is in agreement with the findings of archaeologists who excavated these ancient cities and dated the beginning of Eridu at 4800 BC, earlier than any other city in the immediate area. Here is where a fortuitous natural change of landscape came to the aid of these early settlers. Although irrigation techniques were known at this location, the heavy lifting provided by nature had already been done. At some time in the distant past, perhaps millions of years prior due to an earthquake probably, the Euphrates River changed course. Although it now flows in a southerly direction initially and then turns southeast before it empties into the Gulf, previously it flowed a little further east from a point north of Sippar until it emptied into the Gulf slightly west of where it does now. The Euphrates River today crosses the old riverbed between Eridu and Erech, presently known as Abu Sharain and Warka. This provided a perfect natural channel 
through which some of the water from the Euphrates River could be diverted and used to provide fresh water in a more manageable manner. Canals could be dug as branches off the main canal to irrigate their fields, and archaeologists have found ample evidence this was common practice. Eridu was an ideal place to establish a village. Located on the bank of the Persian Gulf at that time, fishing boats plied this large body of water and furnished its citizens with an ample supply of fresh fish. Date palms grew there and fields were planted with barley and early forms of wheat. Although Bible scholars have scratched their heads for many years looking for Eden, the Babylonians centuries ago knew the garden was located near Eridu. In an earlier episode, it was pointed out that the Akkadian Sumerian word Eden describes a plain, prairie, or desert. And Genesis 2.10 begins and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. The Garden of Eden was irrigated. We can only speculate what distance might have stood between the Garden of Eden, where Adam was cast out, and the settlement of Eridu, where, it appears, he arrived. The garden may have been located in the city itself, on the outskirts, or within some small distance. If the same canal system watered both the garden and Eridu, they must have been in close proximity. In 1940-41, to 41, the Iraqi government undertook the excavation of Eridu. The lead archaeologist Seton Lloyd stated, Here at last was possible to trace a full and uninterrupted sequence of occupations back through the whole duration of the Al Ubaid period to an earliest settlement with some features so distinctive that doubts arose as to whether the name Al-Ubaid could still be appropriately applied to it. Pottery found at the lowest of 19 levels of occupation just above virgin soil was so unique that the excavator simply called it Iridu ware. It was described as an extremely fine quality monochrome painted ware, often with a buff or cream slip. Here are some examples of Eridu ware. Also found at Eridu, nearly at the lowest level, was another distinctive pottery style. In 1937, a German expedition discovered this very distinctive ware at a small mound at the village of Kalat Haji Muhammad. They also uncovered this same material along the banks of the Euphrates, located fairly near to the biblical Erech, and dubbed it Haji Muhammad ware. 